Darren Kinder and today we're going to be reviewing the Polaris Dragon 800. This thing has got a whole bunch of new features for 09. It's lighter, it's faster. Come on, let's take a quick look at it. A couple of things I really noticed right away is obviously the throttle response is fantastic. You touch that throttle and it just immediately accelerates. Uh, so the power is fantastic on it. I really like the pro taper bars and the bar ends just because it, it's a much sturdier feel, more like a motocross feel, and it also, the way the bar ends hold your hands in a lot better than the, the older styles uh, that could kind of jettisoned out a little bit. They, they really work well. The other thing that I particularly really enjoyed was the seat. Because of that narrowness of that seat, it's really easy to make those transitions to get from side to side. If you're going up a hill, across, uh, across hill and, you know, you can really get that thing up on its side and hold it there um, and really make that quick transition from one race to the other. The machine is very well balanced, so that's, again, when you're making those transitions, it, it's, not, it's not taking a lot of weight to make those transitions from one to the other. Sometimes you can do it by leaning out a little bit on one side to the other. You don't necessarily have to take all your body weight to the complete other side of the machine. Uh, sometimes it can do it just very easily. The other thing that I like uh, is in case I do end up on a trail, which I'm trying to avoid at all costs, is the, uh, the Walker Evan shocks and the way the front end is designed, it really sucks up the bumps nicely. You don't, you, you're really not taking that jolt into your body. It, the front end's really taking that up uh, very smoothly. The first thing they've done is they've cut 17 pounds off the machine. And they've done that in several different ways. One thing they've done is in the rails in the back, they've cut that, they've slotted that out. They've also slotted out the track in order to reduce the weight and, and also keep the snow from packing up into the sled as much, keeping it lighter as well. They've also gone in here and they've lightened up the spindles. You can see how they've cut, notched these out a little bit more, just an, all in an effort to cut weight, because as you all know, the lighter it is, and then cu couple that with the power, the better it's gonna go through the snow. So. They've also taken and changed the sway bar on the machine. And what they've done with that is they've made it a little bit lighter so you don't get as much body roll in the machine. It'll, it, it's a lot smoother when you're going through the bumps. If you have to ride on a trail, this thing will suck those bumps up a lot better, especially with those Walker Evan shocks on it. You also get these new Pro Taper bars, which I really like instead of just having that long neck on it. You've got an actual, a, a much sturdier design with this. They've also gone to a lighter weight brake system and a lighter weight rotor. And the beauty of that is, is that not only did you cut weight there, but they also cut the weight, when that rotating mass is moving, it reduces almost twice the weight than it would just cutting the weight itself. The other really cool thing on this is this uh, new instrument cluster. I know most of you are kind of laughing because you know you've never seen your instruments, they're always covered with snow. But uh, with this, you can actually get it to record your top RPMs, your top speed, also your top uh, water coolant temperature. And so if you're trying to get it clutched right, you don't have to be focusing down at your instruments as you're trying to climb some hill and really get this thing set in, dialed in right. So it's kind of cool. You get it up top of the hill or get it back to your trailer, make those adjustments and take it out and run it again. They've also moved the hand warmers down here, uh, which are very easy to get to. You're not trying to get underneath your handlebars to get to them. And the other thing that I, that I personally really like is they use a real narrow seat on this. Um, it's got a lot of cush in case you had to sit on it, but what I like is that I can really swing my foot around the back of the machine real quickly without getting it caught up on anything. And they've got a little space underneath here so you can put a little gear bag under there and not catch your foot on it when you're trying to get around the sled and make those quick transitions. Now the Dragon comes in two different track lengths. Today we're riding the 155, but it also comes in a 163. And the track is a 15 inch wide, uh, 2.4 inch thick paddles. And they've done something kind of cool with the paddles is that they, they use a really stiff paddle at the base, but they use a softer rubber at the top. And what that does is it allows the machine to float on the powder better and not trench so much. They've also, as you can see back here, is the rear rails. They've slotted this out so it makes it a lighter machine. And also, if you look at the track back here, normally you're used to seeing these holes here for the drivers, but there's also that third set of holes in the middle that allow it to, to float better and be a lighter machine. If you'd like to check out one of these new Polaris Dragons, please do so at either Triple S Polaris, Cox Automotive, or at Wellers and Camas. We'll see you next time. I'm Darren Kinder.